everybody, so I'm on the phone again, and we're welcome to have Gianna Tuggle. If you guys don't know Gianna, she's been on the show once. Uh, this, I don't, gee, when, do you remember when that was? That was early on in the coronavirus stages, you know, back. Yeah, that was a few months ago. I think it was in April, actually. Yeah, it was it was close, but you guys can check out that early intro. We talked about a lot of that, so go back on the Shield of Hope channel and check that stuff out. But G, how's how's life been since? Um, it's been pretty good. You know, just yeah. working on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um. I guess because I did text you and talk about or uh, send you topics that we could discuss and something that was really brought up recently, especially in this day and age with politics and everything else going on here, about how we can bring films, because Gianna's an actress, obviously, she started in a few products outside of my own as well, um, but how would you like to see films bring a moralistic and maybe even like a Christian approach back to it? Oh, that's hard. I mean, it's hard nowadays because I feel like people are trying to take the Christian out of things. Like, they want to separate politics and church, but the only way to bring everybody together, I feel, is if you put both of those together. No, I I 100% agree with you there. And one of the things that I talked about with my buddies um, when we were discussing about scripts and other ideas for films, you know, there seems to be this this idea out there and i'm not one of those people that believe in that video games have you know corrupted and desensitized people i'm not a big believer of that because growing right. up there was always you know video games that were pretty violent and evil but there always seemed to be more of like christian family themed valued films like there always seemed to be more of good than like maybe partly evil but it kind right. of seemed to have flipped here in the past maybe decade where there's just been more Hardcore action, swearing, vulgar, vulgar language, even like nudity in films, and less of a Christian family value films. Yeah, and you know what's crazy to me is that everybody always wants like diversity in films, and they want to like represent every type of, um, say like you're transgender, or say you want to like be a lesbian or something like that. But they they want to take out the religion in it because it might hurt people that aren't religious. But to that, I don't get that. Yeah, I, I think when you're pandering to one audience. Uh, like, I never thought, before all this political agendas got pushed, but when you're trying to uh, represent everybody equally across the board, I, I, I don't know. To me, growing up, you know, even, like, up until I would say 2014 is where I really, like, when they started pushing it hardcore about, like, putting it in people's minds about getting uh, equality across the board in films. I looked at a film before that, and I never thought – you know, that was like, I never cared what color or what ethnicity as like, it was like telling a good story back then. But now for some reason, it doesn't appear to be that anymore. It's just focused strictly on agendas. Well, that's what I don't like about it is that I get it. Like we're all supposed to be equal and I completely agree with that. But for me, I'm like more focused on whatever story the film is telling. I don't care. Like who's in it, what color they are, any of that. Like, that's not what it's about for me. So it kind of takes out, like, the passion about being in a film or watching a film. You know what I mean? No, I agree. Uh, and one one of the things that I brought up, too, especially, and I people can go back and listen to the podcast with Jake Ben Kenny. we talked about how it seems like the divide between major films, like the, the big Hollywood uh, theatrical releases, and the divide between the amateur filmmaking is getting kind of narrow. I mean, it seems like people are putting out better quality content on like a YouTube platform or like a Twitch yeah. or, or a stream or, you know, just like any streaming service that's independent and kind of going, like kind of matching the Hollywood quality. Yeah, it's crazy now. You can just, um, and I find myself watching YouTube a lot of the time too and just watching films on there because one, it's free and two, it's like it's the same quality. I mean, you can just put anything out there and everyone's going to watch it. You'll get famous and then you can, you know, make your own movies, which I think is great. But I just wonder what Hollywood's trying to do to, like, change that. Because I feel then everyone has the same image. And, and I think, and again, I'm one of those people where I think everything, you know, obviously stories, when we craft stories, they all come from, like, you know, we're, the theory is that all stories have been told before. We just kind of recreate things and put things in different spotlight. But right. it, it feels like, especially in this day and age, where you're seeing a lot more sequels come out and, like, just knockoffs of the actual, like, the original films. I don't know if we're losing creativity. I don't know if our minds are just somewhat, like, n no longer allowed to produce, like, new quality content, especially higher up in the Hollywood and, um, you know, that kind of status. But... I don't know. I think YouTube's the best new place, 
quite frankly, as long as YouTube doesn't decide to mess this stuff up. Um, right. But I think YouTube's well, I the best agree place. With you with that too. Let's talk a little bit about because I know you were just telling me about a film that you and your sister were in that just came out a few months ago or this year. Yeah. So me and my little sister Gracie, we were both uh, we were supposed to be cheerleaders as extras in the um, stands of this movie. It's called The Order of Rights. It just came out about like two months ago in a select few theaters, but I'm pretty sure it's on Pure Flix. If you know what that is, it's a Christian. Um, website where you can watch all these different types of movies, kind of like Netflix. But um, Ben Davies is in it. He's a good actor. It's about him and his girlfriend. He's a football star, and she gets pregnant, and one of them wants to abort the child, and the other one doesn't. So they take it to court, and basically, like, they interpret, and they put God in everything and all of their decision-making. So it's really good, though. It's a really good story. No, I mean, Pure Flix, too, has been rising through the charts, and I don't know, I because I tried to actually, and I I'll, maybe somebody will hear this from Pure Flix, but I tried to apply to, you know, try to see if they had any job openings there to try to get, like, you know, my foot in the door at different places. And, right. um, you know, it seems like a lot of their stuff is outsourced. Is that is that true at all? Like, you know, like, do they hire, like, or do they buy films from, like, independents? So that's um, actually what they do. They're not really, like, I don't, I think they have a main group that they get together and they talk about like their um the supervisors like talk about how they're going to get more content but they're not making their own films they are just getting them from whoever wants to give them you know what i mean like if you if you asked probably to put one of your films up there then they would probably say yes i think so which one should i put should i put a mile apart yeah <laughs> Get you on there twice. Have you been on any other Pure Flix or any um, any other streaming services that that I know of? Or um, other than Netflix, I was on HBO in the last OG with Tracy Morgan. I was featured in that one. And then I'm trying to think. I was in um this one show called Strangers, but that's on Facebook Watch. I don't know if you've ever watched anything on there. It's a comedy show, but. I was featured in that, too. It was just featured extra parts, but other than Pure Flix, Netflix, HBO, and Facebook Watch, I've only been on YouTube, so. Gotcha. I'll have to pull up some of those, and you'll have to send me some links to watch more of that. Um, yeah, sure. Because that would be pretty cool, and especially that one that we just talked about uh, in a few select theaters. If that ever comes um, on a streaming service, you have to let me know, because that would be pretty cool. I will look it up tonight and send it to you. Awesome. I appreciate it. Also, while we're on, while we're on the line, because I'm going to take a few minutes to, uh, because some of the people on um, that follow me, they know about my merchandise that I have going out here officially for Shield of Hope. So I'm going to ask you, Gianna, because I think I, we weren't obviously allowed, or we not that we weren't allowed, we weren't obviously able to connect for the uh, the fifth year of uh, Shield of Hope anniversary podcast. But being that all my cast and crew that have helped me helped from years past is getting a free merch from me for as a thank you would you prefer a shield of hope mug or a shield of hope t-shirt uh honestly i would wear the t-shirt okay okay maybe you'll get your name out there if i wear it more too all right well i appreciate it but again i appreciate your help along the way too because not only have you been in one film you've been on multiple podcasts with me now and hopefully we get to continue to do this in the future yeah, and if you ever want to, um, like, make a uh, film together, I'm totally down. Just let me know. Oh, I'm down for it. Do I? Hey, I'd be fine with coming there, too, because you have a lot better weather over there than I have here. Oh, yeah. We got a beach, too, so. Yeah, we got to do a beach film. Well, we can definitely probably use some equipment I have. Ooh, I like it. Have you been any? Have you uh, been striving towards any more, any more future projects, or has it been kind of, like, on the down low for you right now? Um, right now, I'm not really sure what I'm doing, but I would definitely love to be more projects. And I'm honestly thinking about, um, maybe trying to do like a little bit of both, like do my regular job and then have like a side gig and see if I can get in anything. Okay. And I might, now this is still early on in the process, but I might have a music video that I might need some extras or like a, even a main in. I'll have to talk with uh, the musicians, but... Um, if you're free for maybe a weekend, if we're able to get something together. Yeah, I definitely do that. I also know um, of a music video director, and I, he's like the art artist director. I filmed a Smart Water commercial with him, so I can ask him if he um, has any ideas if you need. Awesome. 
Yeah, I mean, I appreciate that. Um, so when we let's get back to more of the Christian family values here. Have you seen any? Have you seen any films recently? Because didn't that new film like from I Still Believe, or is that even the title of it? I I'm oh, blanking oh, here. I just had it not too long ago. That one with KJ Apa and uh, I think what's her name, Britt or something. No, I'm blanking too. I have not seen it, but I really want to see it because the kid that's in it is um, one of the main characters on Riverdale. Is he really? And, yeah, so it's based on a true story. I don't know if you've watched the trailer, um, but it looks really, really good. The guy's wife, um, he's a musician, the guy's wife passed away, so um, and I think he fell in love again, but it's all about his wife and his journey. I think it's about Jeremy Camp, isn't it? I don't know. See that I'm not too like I've when I heard of that film, I thought to myself, like when I saw it at first. Now, I don't remember there was wasn't there like an original to it or like was it from the same directors of because there was a music there was a Christian music one that came out not too long ago. Uh, I don't know if it was from the same directors or not, but it kind of had that. Um, um, oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm thinking of a fall on our stars. But which one's the one with Lady Gaga that just happened? Oh, a star is born. A star is born. It gave me somewhat of a familiar feeling from that. Obviously, it's not going to be that plot. But yeah, they're I, based on the, um, the Christian, but the two main actors in it are really good. One is from um, The Longest Ride, and then the other one's from Riverdale. But basically, uh, it's a Christian story about Journey Camp, and it's about his journey and how um, he the loss of his wife, and that there's always hope. Anything that has to do with like a music and a musician when it comes to a storyline, do they all seem the same to you? Yes. Okay, I thought so too. <laughs> yeah, that's why that's why it's really hard to find good movies now, and that's why I like movies like the last time I said I liked um, the movie Divergent, or like um, if you've ever seen Project Almanac, I like that movie. I like anything that has a crazy different story. Like even horror films, I can watch the movie Us because that um, that director strives to be like just something that you wouldn't think of on a daily basis. What is something you look for in independent films when you go to watch it? Like, say, okay, because we talked about being on YouTube and, like, how YouTube has such a diverse platform for, like, you know, good artists and upcoming, you know, amateur uh, filmmakers and whether it could be even singers, too. I mean, I mean, you look at how YouTube has expanded and, like, they were, I, th I would say they were known for finding musicians and musicers before they were even, like, known for finding, like, uh, filmmakers and artists and actors. Uh, right. but, but when you search through the search bar, like, what's the first thing you look for? Is it like, is it like a fan film for like maybe a Star Wars or a Marvel, or is it like, what do you search like newest hit film or newest short films of like 2020 or like how do you go about finding things? I always find myself looking up like the top 100 films and then just going through them and seeing which ones I haven't watched. And most of them I actually haven't heard of, believe it or not. I've probably heard of like 10 of them. And then the other ones I'll just create a list and write down on my list like when I'm going to watch them. Mm -hmm. But it's usually, um, I'll look up Marvel things that I haven't watched, like Marvel TV shows. Um, because, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen Cloak and Dagger, but it's not, like, a common one to watch, but it's really good. So anything that, like, you haven't heard of that you, that you've seen that has good reviews, it's probably really good to watch. Like, Oculus on Netflix, I'd never heard of that movie before I was looking up, um, another movie. I think I was looking up, like, I forget what it was, but when the O popped up, I clicked on it, and then it ended up being, like, one of my favorite movies. Yeah, it's always interesting because typically, and which is weird for me, because typically when I watch stuff on YouTube, like when I go find these new short films on YouTube, typically the first films I find are like short horror films. Right. And I, and I don't know why, because that's not really me. <laughs> right. But, but for some reason, I get captivated by it. I mean, the one time um, that before Lights Out, do you ever see Lights Out by chance? Yeah. yeah. Okay, but before Lights Out, the original person that wrote Lights Out had, like, a short film up that was, like, put into a competition to, like, become Lights Out. Like oh, yeah, I saw that one. Yeah, and I saw that on, on YouTube first. And I was like, oh, this is cool. And then, like, about two months later, they showed that, like, oh, from the like, from a YouTube channel, like, a, a winning short film, here comes, like, Lights Out or whatever from in, like, theaters. Yeah, they and I was like, oh. made it into a movie, which I thought was amazing. Yeah, I, I did like that movie. I also liked the movie... um. It wasn't Get Out. Which one was? Don't Breathe. Was... Yeah, I know you said that before. Don't Breathe is still one of my favorite horror films. Although, Invisible Man did kind of take it over. I did I did like Invisible Man when that came out. So 
felt don't breathe felt really fast for me. Mm-hmm. Like I thought everything happened very quickly. So you're not a fan of it happening quickly, or you like that it happened quickly? No, I mean it depends what it is. Like I wanted like some type of build up, but I just feel like I didn't get that in that in that movie. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, to me, though, uh, I don't know, this might be different for everybody, but to me, I'd rather sit in a theater and be, and, like, when it ends, be like, oh, man, that seemed like it was pretty quick. Like, oh, did I get my two hours or, like, hour and a half worth of, like, you know, paying the $7 to get in? Oh, but, right, right. But typically to me, like, I do, like, faster-paced stuff. Unless, are you are you just talking about, like, the actual story just going too quick itself and not, like, the pacing? Yeah, I just mean the storyline, because if I'm watching, like, a paranormal movie, I do want stuff to be happening throughout the whole movie. Like, I want it to be fast, but the storyline has to, like, build up for me, and I feel like it didn't do that. I'll tell you one film do not watch, and I would not recommend it for the audience, which sounds terrible, but I'm not going to recommend it. Midsummer. Oh, I watched that. Oh, that was... Uh, that was... <laughs> no, if you've ever seen that movie, have you ever seen Hereditary? Because that's the prequel to it. No, see, I didn't see Hereditary, but somebody had me watch I... Midsummer with them. No, it's by the same director. I remember watching that movie, and I was thinking, what did I just watch? It's not that it was a bad movie, it's that it disturbed me so much that I couldn't even watch it. It was a one-time watch movie. Like, I'm not going to watch it again, but it was good. Like, the storyline was good, and he, the way he did it, because he wanted it to be that way, the way he did it was really good. Like, I don't know, the director's good, so if you like movies like that, then yeah, definitely watch it. But I also did like Hereditary better. Was it was it better than that film that we watched that one day? Uh, what I'm trying to remember the title of it. I'm blanking now. <laughs> King film like wasn't it a good husband or something yeah something like that it was from like stephen king but it looked like somebody had just bought bought stephen king stuff and did like a low cheap knockoff version yeah no it was way better than that um i don't know what it was about that movie but we were predicting the whole movie to the point where we were like no this definitely isn't happening because it's way too obvious and then it happened yeah yeah no it's definitely better than that i'll tell you what one movie i can go back and watch that you know, it's almost like it's right in your face obvious, but it, it wasn't, was uh, Knives Out. Knives Out was so good, and I predicted it from the beginning. At first, I had a little question, but I was like, nope, it's him. But it's definitely him. Yeah. That was such a good movie. For the people that haven't watched it yet, I'm not really going to say who it is, but when they brought a certain character back in, like, halfway through, and he was more of a major part in the beginning, I, like, I had him nailed at first. Like about, I was like, oh, it, it has to be him. It's almost like too obvious, and th- and then and then he became a bigger part of it, and I'm like, oh man, I don't know now. Yeah, when they brought him back, because from the beginning I was like, oh, it's him. And then they brought him back, and I'm like, wait a second. But then you're like, okay, now there's no way. Like he's they they did a really good job at manipulating you, which is what the movie was supposed to be. So. The reference between uh, at the beginning of the film with the uh, the grandfather talking about how some of these knives are real and fake, that played into it pretty well at the end. I was very happy. Yeah. I thought yeah, that, it was a, that was a good callback. Add some really good actors in it too. Oh, top of the charts, <laughs> like I those like, and you know also too, which is amazing because that at least you know I don't know what the budget was on that film, but obviously that was like a higher budget. But when you looked at, and I keep I keep saying it, I, I keep praising this film, and I really don't know why, but I keep praising the Ted Bundy film with Zac Efron on Netflix. That, though, that film was really good. It was really good, but it had high-quality actors, but it did not have a big budget. Yeah, but they made it really good. Yes, they did. I was, I was, I'm still impressed with that. That got, like, my one of my top films of 2019. Yeah, that was a great film. I mean, besides the fact that Ted Bundy is a serial killer, they still did the film justice. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it played into who he was as a character. People didn't want to people didn't want him to be the actual killer because he was he had charisma, you know, and like and he was like he was like the almost like a golden child to the point. Yeah. Cuz everyone thought that he was such a good person that it was almost shocking when they found out what he actually did. Is there any is there any events going on in the world today, or just anything in general in your mind, whether it's a whether it's a genre or just a, an action or a, a plot? Is there any movie you would like to see made? 
any movie I would like to see made. Like, as in, like, well, again, we could talk about a, a certain genre or, like, a sci-fi, but, like, we talked about, like, uh, the Ted Bundys, or we talked about, like, just, like, even the Midsummer or anything else like that, or even, like, it could be, like, A Star is Born or, like, the, the Christian version of that, which is, um, uh, oh, my goodness, I just blanked again. <laughs> that, uh, um, I still believe, yeah. So, I mean, is there any particular plot or story you would like to see made? Um, honestly, I haven't really thought about that. If I had to think about something, I don't know, because I, there's not really, I mean, there's events going on in the world right now, but it's to the point where, like, I really don't want to hear about it anymore. If 2020 was a film that they brought out in, say, the year 2022, say they made 2021 to make a, uh, a film about the events of 2020, would you even watch it? If 2020 was a film, it'd be a Black Mirror episode. <laughs> would, you, would you even want to watch um, it, though? Or would you not want to relive 2020? No, I, I wouldn't want to relive it, but I would definitely watch it. I don't know. I feel like I'm on the line right now where I'm just like, if they made a 2020, like I can watch the 2012 film and kind of like laugh because obviously the world didn't end, but I, I just, know, I just rewatched that. Yeah. If I had but the, now they're saying it's 2021, they just flipped the numbers. The, there's a good meme. I was telling my friend about it tonight and I'll, 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 I might post it here on the screen or I might just send it to you later. Or you might've even seen it. The guy, um, there's a guy like smiling and it says New Year's Eve 1231 2020 and he's smiling and then it hits midnight and it goes to 1232 2020. Oh boy. And he has like a face like what? Oh boy. <laughs> I love that. That's funny. It's, it's like ground love- it's like groundhog's year instead of groundhog's day. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It is. You know, Groundhog's Day wasn't that a movie? Yeah, Groundhog's Day was a movie, but it was uh, it was also made like Happy Death Day too. Like they they yeah, they no, overplayed that kind of a little bit. But yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I liked the first Happy Death Day, and the second one was good. Like it was really funny, but I feel like they did the exact same thing that they did with the first one. So I was like, I wish they would have switched it up a little bit. Yeah. I get it. Well, that goes back to our earlier statement about originality. If it's just like. You know, if we're just doing these cheap knockoffs and sequels and prequels to films, and because we're running out of ideas, or yeah, nothing is ever as good as the first one. No, and that's why I, even I, even when I do now agendas, we're trying to put out a second one. Uh, I kind of vowed after Visions of Truth because it was Memory Lies and Visions of Truth in our Shield of Hope channel. I kind of vowed that I really want want to do sequels again uh, because I wanted to keep everything original. But but I feel like um with that yes, if it's a comedy. I love sequels because I think comedies are so funny. Like, there's really no way you can screw that up unless it's, like, terrible. But comedies, I would love sequels for. Did you see the second Jumanji? Yes, I did. Okay, I haven't seen it yet, so is it worth seeing? Yes, I loved it. It was so good. Okay. I'll have to keep in mind. You know, I'm one of those people, though, and this this might sound weird because sometimes I don't watch films because I don't want originals to be ruined. But like no, to me, the original with even though it's a com even though this one's a comedy and the original one was actually like serious with Al- with a uh, Robert Williams, uh, I kind of didn't want to watch this one because I respected Robin Williams too much. Right. But I eventually came around to watching the first one and I loved it. Yeah, I mean, if you watch the second one, it's really good. Um, they they did change the storyline, which I really liked. So it's not the same. And that's why I think it made it um, one of, like, the top films of this year was because the second one, they didn't, you know, do the same thing. They completely changed the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll have to give it a watch then. And again, um, yeah, I would love to, I would love to see some of those commercials and the films you were in and, like, you were talking about here. Um, yeah. Because I would, love to, I would love to be up to date with uh, your current projects and stuff like that. And again, we'll have you back on the channel here coming up. Um Stay on the line when I close this out. But last question for you, for the podcast. If you wanted, if you were going to play somebody in a movie about their okay. life, who who would you want to play? About their life? Yeah. Like out of everybody in the world? Yes. Ooh, this is a tough one. Because I don't know if I want to be a, a guy or a girl. <laughs> um... Man, I really don't know. Well, who do you want to be? Who would I want to be? If, yeah. If I could sing, I would love to be um, 
either talk if I would like to act in a, a Zac Efron, like be his life, or Hugh right. Jackman's life. I think it'd be pretty cool to go back and <laughs> and uh, portray one of theirs in a bio doc slash documentary. You know, I think I would be Ansel Elgort. All right. Because he lives a crazy life, and I would love to. Not like crazy, but I feel like the way he talks, like he's friends with everybody. Or maybe even like one of the old singers, like Elton John or something. You know, I didn't see. Like, I know that, I I know that was sad for a little bit, but at least they grew from it. Yeah, and I didn't, and I didn't see their um, with Elton John. I haven't watched Rocket oh, Man. Rock, Rocket Man. Rock, that was a great movie. Loved every second of it. Which one do you think was better, Bohemian Rhapsody, or do you think the Elton John one? Ooh, um, I really liked the Elton John one, but and then again, they had a very different styles. The Elton John one was kind of more of like a movie musical, and then Bohemian Rhapsody was strictly like it was a movie, but it was basically a biography. Like if you were to make or um, a documentary, if you were to make like a documentary just with actors. 